there's a comment I hear quite a lot. I say hear, don't hear it. I read it. And it's, it's often when I'll praise Lanzini. I don't know if you remember, two or three months ago, I did a, a video suggesting that the, we, we might do well to include Lanzini in the team and, and sort of almost make him the number 10. Um, build it around him. Now, whilst I think I did get it wrong at that point, because clearly we, we went on a, a really, really good run at West Ham. I mean, we've done remarkably well without really needing Lanzini. Um, I think my reasons for wanting him included are still the same. They still hold water now. The same reasons that I wanted him in the team then are exactly the same reasons that I would like him in the team now. I just feel now there's maybe a little bit more opportunity because... Let's just say, as an attacking quartet, they're not all firing. I've said a few times already in the last week or so that out of all our front players, the two players that are in form are Gerard Bowen and Manuel Lanzini. But the comment that I often read whenever I praise Lanzini is that people say, well, Lanzini's never been the same since his injury. He, Lanzini's not the same player. And I talk, every, every time I read it, I think, well, does it matter? Is it that important? I mean, let's be fair. What is important right now is not whether Lanzini is the same Lanzini that he was four years ago. It's really, is the Lanzini of now better than the players whose place he'd be looking to take? And at the moment, I just think he is. I was a little bit disappointed, I've got to say, to read a story in... Um, Actually, I, don't know. I think it might have been when I was looking through all the stories on the One Football app or something like that. It was about us getting his value up. Now, it was I don't I don't think David Moyes would be anywhere near crass enough to to make these comments himself. But it was almost like he was fattening him up for the kill. It was a case of let's get a tune out of Lanzini, let's build Lanzini's value up with some good performances, then we can sell him on and, and bolster the transfer kitty. Now, um. I, I get, I can understand a part of it. Lanzini signed a massive mega deal at West Ham, and has he given value since he had that deal? No, he hasn't. I think he was close on a deal, something like hundred grand a week. No, he didn't. But by the same, by the same sort of rule set, we got a lot of value out of Lanzini when he was on a wage that was lower than he should have been on when he was playing above and beyond. I thought there was a time, certainly just before he got injured, when Coutinho was still at um, at Liverpool. I thought Liverpool was seriously looking at him as the replacement for Coutinho, and I didn't see an awful lot between them. There was a point when I thought he was performing at sort of the level of Coutinho, of Eriksen, just, just below maybe, but that's the sort of player we were looking at, and we weren't paying him a huge amount of money then. But I certainly do think he should be in the team now. There's, that is, I don't think there's any doubt about that at all. And I want him in the team now, and I want him in the team today to play Brighton. Um, and I think that's that's really the point. I'll be very interested to see what David Moyes does today. Um, there's been a lot of talk about Cresswell. David, he's a funny one, David Moyes. Sometimes you pay attention to what he says, and sometimes I think he's doing smoke and mirrors. I have a feeling there's smoke and mirrors with Cresswell. I have a feeling we will see Cresswell this evening, hopefully. Oh, by the way, the game is on uh, Amazon, just in case you didn't know. It's 7.30 kickoff, so, you know, odd, odd channel, odd time. Um, just to go back to the Lanzini one, though, what is interesting is this, that selling Lanzini might s somehow boost the transfer covers. What would we get for Lanzini? Even if Lanzini went on, you know, was playing really well, I, I still don't think we'd get 20 million for him. I think we'd sell him for 10, 15 million quid, something like that. Now, we've just signed, I say we, the Premier League have just signed, we've just doubled our deal with an American broadcaster that's worth $2.1 It basically, depending on your finishing position, it's worth about $80 million, as I understand it, per team per season in the Premier League. I think the top team can get $100 million, the bottom team gets $60 million. It's something like that. There's a disparity between each place, and I might have that slightly wrong, but you get, you get the idea. It's worth a lot of money, and the deal has just been signed. I think when you're looking at lots of money like that, are we really that bothered about selling Lanzini and getting 10, 15 million quid? Surely there's there's an instant cash injection. We know that we've got um, we've got somewhere an overdraft facility where we can draw on that money. We know that money's coming in. I, I honestly can't remember. Is it ESPN or... I, I don't, I don't. In all honesty, it's one of the, it's one of the American sports networks. Can't remember which one. But we've got that money coming in. So I think there's a transfer kitty. Hopefully there's a transfer kitty there. More money has come in. Um, 
so I'm not so sure about Lanzini. Big game today, though. Brighton, I've said for quite a while, Brighton is our bogey team. Um, and I've just felt, I think they're a really good team. Any time I see them play, look brilliant. And then I sort of look back and thought, hold on, they haven't won in a couple of months. But really good team. And I've noticed they're praising each other. Uh, Potter, not Harry, Graham Potter and, and David Moyes are praising each other. You know, I think there's a lot of, a lot of, patting of backs going on here between them so um i think they both certainly know each other's value we'll get to um we'll get to antonio in just a minute before i do um go and check out canning town lens hammers chat shop canning town len why have i shown you this little one why show you a little one i'll show you this big one it's big it's a big shiny look at the estrella i love the estrella on there by the way um hammers chat have got an art shop on canning town lens website canningtownlen.com forward slash hammers chat the link is in the description below if you're struggling to work out what to get for christmas i say you love one for christmas what to buy for yourself for christmas don't forget to treat yourself this christmas um check it out len will draw you you send him a photograph and he will draw you um pick your background by the way um a few of you remember that wouldn't you the old the old club shop, so to speak. There's loads of stuff there. There's artwork. There's prints from uh, autograph prints from some of his films, um, team stuff, crowds, things. Honestly, go and check it out. It's the Canning Town Len Hammers Chat Art Shop. I'm sure you'll find something you love on there. If that's not your your cup of tea, Len's been painting. Len, it's amazing. Len has painted Billy Bonds. I don't mean he's actually gone up to him with a paintbrush and a roller and done that on him. You wouldn't do that to Bonzo, would you? But no, he's actually painted him um, on a canvas. Beautiful, beautiful work. He painted Mark Noble as well. I'll see if I can pop it up here. Basically, Len is selling off prints of, of his original. Amazing artist. He really is. There's a lot of people that play at this stuff. And then there's Canning Town Len. Canning Town Len is a very, very talented guy. On the website, there's a little icon on the bottom that says, Chat to Len. Go on, chat to him. He's a nice guy. Let him know what you want, be it a, a commission of yourself, uh, to have your picture next to a player, um, maybe one of these wonderful prints of, of Billy Bonds or something like that. Um, anyway, there you go, Canning Town Len, link is in the description below. Today's game, Antonio, um, I think he'll play, I think he probably I think he probably should play, but I wouldn't mind seeing Perkins at some point in, in this one. I know I said it, I spoke about it in yesterday's video, um, yeah, I... I I wouldn't mind seeing Perkins. Um, I, I do wonder what Brighton are gonna are gonna turn up. Um, I say which Brighton are gonna turn up. I do wonder about fans turning up as well. I don't know how many games we got left if this COVID thing um, carries on. I'll, I'll be going to the Chelsea game, by the way. Looking forward, really looking forward to that. Um, Saturday, Saturday kick off lunchtime, kick off on Saturday. Don't mind that at all. Anyway, I digress. I've gone ahead of myself there. Um, for the game tonight against Brighton, um, I'm a little bit nervous about this game, but I think I think we can win. I think we should win. I think we must win. Is it a must-win game? No, probably not. But I'm saying it should be. Sometimes you do so well in the league, you allow yourself a little bit of wriggle room, and we've done that. We've we've lost some games. We're still in fourth. Let's now push on and let's now go again. Uh, I don't think he'll muck around with a formation in the same way that he did. Um, I think he'll go back to the four at the back. Um, for Graham Potter to be talking about their fragility from set plays means it's on his mind. I think we've got to go for it. I think we've got to hit a lot of shots at their goalkeeper. And I think we've really got to try and force a lot of corners. I'd very, Bearing in mind, height is a little bit of an issue for him. I'd really very much like to see Suchek liberated in this one, uh, certainly. I think Bowen back, Bowen to start. Fresh, fizzing, buzzing around. I don't know what fizzing's got to do with it. The effervescent. A uh, Bowen fizzing around. I'd like to see, um, like to see that. Um, I definitely like to see Lanzini, as I said at the start of the video. I, I do think it's a must. I think it's, I think it's really, really important. Um, sorry, I, sorry, I meant to say this at the start. He makes noise about going back, back to Buenos Aires. I think we've got to get the best out of him for the for the time that he's here. Make him feel wanted. Make him feel loved. Make him feel that actually scoring a goal like that and playing like he has for the last four or five games actually means something that gets you a place in the team. And if you noticed, also, we talk about who's going to be right back. Judging by the way David Moyes has been talking about Ben Johnson, Ben Johnson will be at right back. He's, he's been... The things that Moyes has been saying about him would just indicate that that's the case. Very, very happy with him. Very happy with his attitude. Made a couple of points about his um, performance against Raheem Sterling. 
I, I, I make him right. That, that being said, I also think, um, don't get me wrong, I think Sue Fowler, I don't think Sterling's in the best of form, but let's put it that way. But there was a point where Sterling tried to dribble around him and Johnson was having none of it. And I do think he's a really, really good defender. It's just what he offers going forwards might not be um, quite as good as what Sue Fowler does defensively, really good. But then again, I think Sue Fowler's really good defensively. I, I just... Reading between the lines and listening to what David Moyes has said, I think we're going to see Ben Johnson in this game against Brighton. I might have it, I might have it all wrong. You know, I might Lanzini might not start, Cresswell might be injured, and Soufal might start ahead of Johnson. I might have it all wrong. You know, but I just you know you could play a little bit of guesswork and a build up for the game. Looking forward to the game as well. I think we'll play well. I think we'll play of in intensity. Sometimes a loss gives you a kick up the backside. Sometimes a double loss gives you a double kick up the backside. Um, something like that. Anyway. I think they'll certainly be highly motivated for this one. David Moore is not going to let them rest on their uh, rest on their laurels. I don't think the squad will. I don't think the squad wants to any either. I'm I'll I, I tell you what I can say with some certainty. Big performance from Declan Rice uh, tonight. I really do think we're going to get one of those. He's going to be um, dominant in the midfield. He's going to need to be dominant in the midfield. Um, I just want to say that attacking trio as well. Ben Rama, Fornells, Antonio... I don't think... Look, can you drop them all? No, you can't drop them all. You probably shouldn't do, but I do think at least one of them's got to go for this game. One of them, you can't keep having those level of performances. And look, I know it's only a couple of games, uh, I thought particularly Four Nails and Ben Rama, obviously sensational against Liverpool. So um, Antonio is such a good player, he really is, but you've got to send out the right signal. Moyes got to send out the right signal, which is basically, you don't play well, you're out of the team. You play well, Lanzini... You're in the team. Um, quite confident. Quite looking forward to it. So, half seven. Join us 25 past six for the build-up show. Charlie, take you through the watch-along. We'll be there uh, afterwards for the uh, for the review. Myself and Geo straight away. Post-match review. And then we'll probably record the player ratings early on Thursday, I would imagine. Um, let's calm down a little bit. We might we might record it later on on, on Wednesday night if we've, if we've won and we're jubilant. We're all excited. You never know. Um big game let's consolidate our champions league let's say champions league ambitions 